I'm making this video to show people how I made my Jack Skellington costume, which I used for Halloween. I think it turned out pretty good, and a lot of people that saw it loved it. And I took as many photos as I could, so I thought I'd do a little do-it-yourself in case anyone wants to try making one. So I started off by getting a punch balloon from Walmart. These were like kind of what kids get at birthday parties. It has like the rubber band attached to it. And I blew it up to like the general size that I thought I wanted. I then proceeded to do um, paper mache layers and layers of paper mache on the balloon. I think I did about six layers. And you know, you gotta let at least a couple of days for it to dry between each layer. Once the layers were all dried, I used, you know, my ruler and uh, Sharpie pen to mark the center lines and get the general area and a layout for what I wanted the eyes and the nose and the mouth. The nose I actually put on um, tape so that I could move them and adjust them and get them exactly the way I wanted. Um, the detailed drawing wasn't going to show up at all in the mask, but just really gave me a good kind of blueprint to follow. Then after doing the main drawing, I used um, Model Magic, which is like an air dry putty kind of clay stuff that kids use. It's really light, pretty easy to mold, and it air dries. So I bought like a bunch of that stuff and did started with the upper teeth or jaw and followed the blueprint lines to put where I wanted the teeth. I then molded the bottom jaw, got it all kind of the shape I wanted, smoothed it out, and spread it out a little bit more over the full mask to make it sit a little bit better and a bit more of a gradual slope. The nose there was what I started with and moved on to the eyes and the eyebrows. Um, it really didn't take that long to actually mold this. I was kind of surprised and I think it really added a lot of kind of depth to the mask and like I said this model magic stuff is really light so it really didn't add that much weight to it whatsoever. The next morning I realized I didn't like the nose so I was able to reshape it a bit because the model magic does take a long time to dry so that's what that is there, it's just a little bit of reshape. Once the model magic dried for as many days as I could wait, um, I did a uh, last paper mache covering with paper towel because the paper towel is really soft and is able to get in all those kind of crevices and really get that detail. So it kind of shows there the detail work, you know, through each of the teeth and stuff. So it actually turned out pretty good. I used an exacto knife to cut the eyes out which was a little stressful because after all, of, you know, it's probably been at least a couple weeks by now and I really didn't want to screw it up. So you can see that's like the eyes cut out and the little part on, on the bottom there is the, uh, the mouth little slit I cut out as well. Now, this again really didn't add much weight to it whatsoever. The full mask is quite light, um, which is really nice because you're going to be wearing it all night. This photo just shows me working on it, and then my wife's uh, dragon that she used for her Khaleesi costume. I then um, used fiberglass and a two-part epoxy resin that I got from uh, like a fiberware sh store, or whatever it's called. And I fiberglass the inside of the mask um, along where the hole for your head goes because at this point it still had a lot of flex to it and I really needed to stiffen it up before putting a plaster on it to smooth it out. I also used the resin around the mouth and all the detail work just to add some strength because I again I really didn't want any issues with cracking or flexing and such. I then used um, kind of like a plaster putty what you'd use on drywall to fill in like staple holes and such. Uh, it starts pink and dries white so I did multiple layers. So the first layer, this is the first layer, and then I sanded it down all by hand. Just to try to start smoothing it out. Um, I really wanted a really smooth mask. I didn't want that kind of lumpiness that you see a lot of. I really wanted it to be perfect. So, you know, this is the first layer and after a sanding. Then I did a second layer, which you can see here, and then there's still more crevices and such. So every time you add a layer, sand it down, add a layer, sand it down. Um, I would use uh, water and like rubber gloves or latex gloves or nitrile gloves actually and 
with your hand, I'd smooth it out as most as much as possible because the smoother it is after you apply it, the less sanding you have to do. Um, so this is just kind of a picture of me using the water and just just smoothing it out. So you can see how pink it is there, and once it dries, it dries white. So it's really helpful because then you know. These photos just kind of show after all the detail sanding. Um, it took a long time, and I think my hands cramped up a ton just from all the sanding. Again, you know, in through the eyebrows, around the nose, around all the teeth. Um, but it's one of those things that's really, it's kind of the, probably the main part that you need to really spend the time on because it's what's really the end finish result relies on this kind of detail work. So this is it all done, dried, sanded. You can see it's still not perfect, but it's as good as, <laughs> at least it was going to get for me. I then used that two-part epoxy resin um, that I used for fiberglassing and coated the entire mask in it. I really did not want to like drop this thing or bump it and then have that like plaster stuff crack off. Um, it's that stuff that plaster is really fragile, really brittle. So I decided to do this, and you can see like it gave like a glassy finish. It was really smooth after doing that. So I was really happy and it's super strong, rigid, no flex to it whatsoever anymore. I then used a gray spray paint um, primer to just do a good primer coat. I think I did about two or three coats of primer on it um, just to give a base. And then after the primer had dried, I sanded it all down and prepped it for the other, for the white paint. Uh, while doing all that painting, I worked on the bat tie. So the bat tie, uh, the actual bat head, I used that model magic stuff and kind of shaped the head the way I wanted it. I then also coated that in that two-part epoxy resin, just because the model magic's really spongy and such. So just to give it some strength. The wings I cut out of like a plastic that I used for a different mask, and then um, I just epoxied the bat wing onto the um, head or the, the bat head. After that was done, I used um, some like just like home epoxy, two-part epoxy, and made the little lines just uh, that were going to be painted on lines, but I wanted a bit more of a 3D effect, so I put that on there, which you can kind of see in that photo, and then spray painted the whole thing uh, flat black. Once uh, that was all done and drying, I did the, I think I did about four coats of white paint, and uh, let that dry. Uh, for multiple hours and then went out and did a couple coats with a uh, not a flat but a semi-flat um, clear coat just to protect it seal everything in and make it just as perfect as possible um, to basically wear this thing on your head what I did was I used a helmet which I got from um, like a Walmart which I think the helmet cost me like $10. It's like the cheapest helmet you could ever imagine, but it was perfect because it's super light and it's just foam. So what I did was I used a hacksaw and just started cutting up the helmet, one, so I could get it into my mask, and two, so that it would kind of sit properly because, you know, the mask is very round, so I had to shape the helmet so it would actually fit inside. Once I had it fit in there and... and shaved down as much as I could or wanted, I used um, the home epoxy, stuck it on there, and then put my head in there and kind of adjusted it the way I wanted. Um, once that was all done, I got some black paint and did the detail work around the teeth and just for the nose. Um, I did that before doing the clear coat because I kind of wanted, I didn't want everything to be clear coated together, so the black kind of stands out a bit more, which is nice. Then I used uh, some hot glue and glued in some black fabric on the inside of the eyes. Um, the fabric's really easy to see through. I use it for another mask as well. And that was pretty much it for the mask. For the jacket, I got from a Value Village, um, which my sister and I modified and kind of brought the front up and put a big white button on it. And then I used white fabric paint and painted, painted on every single line all by hand and it took forever I did that on the jacket and some black pants that I had um, the paint uh, you iron on after so after it's all dried you use an iron and iron it on to kind of set it and that stuff like you can put it in the wash and it doesn't come off it works really well 
and it's super bright. It it's so the lines stand out so much. And I've seen a lot of people make costumes where they um, buy striped fabric, but this way really makes it look great. This is just um, the finished mask, um, all done, dried, everything, with a couple of the other masks I've made. That's a Phantom of the Opera mask that I did a couple years ago, and then that's a uh, Witch King from the Lord of the Rings mask I made last year for Halloween. Um, the Lord of the Rings mask, the big one there, is made out of plastic, which is what I use for the bat wings that uh, I use for the tie. And it'd be great if I could do a similar video like this for that mask, but I didn't really take photos when I was making it which is why I took all the photos um, for the Jack Skellington mask. So I think the end result turned out really well. Um, it really ended up looking really good and uh, stopped, a lot of people really liked it on Halloween. Um, we ended up going out to a club that night and uh, there's just a picture of me and a friend of mine, Robin, just before we got there. and another friend Ken in the uh, Venom costume. One great thing about this costume was I did that little slit in the mouth and that was for, I thought it was gonna be for like kind of a bit more breathability. <laughs> but in the end it was great because I was able to put a straw in it so I was able to drink out of it really easily, um, which is awesome. This is a kind of cool photo but I wish the white popped out a bit more in the black light, which I might do some more painting to make it pop out more. Um, and then that's my wife there in her Daenerys costume with the dragon that she made. So I also ended up wearing this to the uh, Vancouver Fan Expo, um, which was great. My feet and legs were killing me because I ended up just taking photos with people for the entire day. Um, I barely got to go and look at any stuff. Um, that's uh, John Borman from the TV show Arrow. Uh, he really liked it, loved the costume and wanted some photos, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so otherwise, pretty much everything worked out really well. I hope you like my costume and hopefully this is very educational and maybe you'll go and try and make your own. If you have any questions about how I did the mask um, or the clothes or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them.